it's possible or even very likely that I'm talking about this because I'm I'm still salty. I mean, look, I, I'm I'm a petty person, and I have to admit, I absolutely hate Barack Obama. I don't just hate him because he failed to live up to the promises that he ran on as president, and he made me like perpetually jaded. Like I believed in him, and he betrayed me as one of his supporters. I'm not just salty because of that. I'm salty because you know after he left the White House, he's still influencing politics specifically the democratic party in a very negative way i mean he intervened in 2020 to get all of the moderates to drop out and coalesce behind joe biden he then later influenced bernie sanders to drop out reportedly on top of that you know in 2020 when we could have seen a real social movement when nba players were threatening to strike after Jacob Blake was shot by a police officer seven times it was Barack Obama who intervened and convinced them to play so Barack Obama is a genuinely bad person and when he's not destroying movements well you know then he is disregarding COVID protocols for his stupid birthday party that nobody really should care about but apparently you know what he's doing is trying to give fuel to the Republicans who claim that the virus isn't that serious and, you know, all of these mask measures and lockdown protocols, this is all just a ploy by liberal elites to, you know, gain more control over you. I mean, by holding a gigantic birthday party in the middle of a pandemic, it's, you know, it's a little bit tone deaf. Like, it's not the biggest issue ever. And I don't want to make it seem as if, like, Barack Obama doing this is the worst thing ever. There are bigger issues to talk about. But because I'm a petty bitch, I'm going to talk about this issue. And, you know, all of these feelings that I feel about Obama was articulated beautifully in an op-ed by Jacobin writer Liza Featherstone, who writes, Barack Obama has been one of the worst ex-presidents ever. Since his retirement from politics, Barack Obama has displayed an astonishing lack of regard for the public good. Instead of serving his fellow human beings, he has mainly devoted himself to a rigorous program of conspicuous self-celebration. And we'll read the article, but I just wanted to give you the headline because it's it's so good. And, and basically, Liza says everything that I've been thinking. Um, you know, it's not just that Obama has caused measurable harm throughout the globe. I mean, this individual is still intervening in Democratic Party politics to stop young people from actually being victorious in any way possible. Even if it's not through electoral politics, he stops NBA players from doing something that would have been really meaningful because they respect Barack Obama. So we have to normalize shitting on Barack Obama. That's one reason why I'm talking about this. And two, I can't stand Barack Obama because, again, I'm, I'm betrayed. I'm like a scorned lover. You uh, break my heart, then I will never let you live it down. I will always shit on you. So we're going to get to what Liza writes because I think she makes some really good points. She writes, all summer, millions of Americans this year worried about being evicted from their homes, catching the Delta variant, persuading recalcitrant loved ones to get vaccinated, or whether a COVID resurgence might keep schools closed in the fall. Former President Barack Obama was apparently loftily unbothered by any of these plebeian concerns. The distinguished memoirist was too busy planning a ginormous 60th birthday party for himself on his vast and vulgar market. Martha's Vineyard Estate, a sprawling 6,892-foot tumor on a beautifully spare coastal landscape, which the Obamas bought in 2019 for $11.75 million. The 475 guests were to include George Clooney and Oprah Winfrey. Even people close to him argued for weeks that as the White House was urging caution given the recent COVID resurgence, the optics of the shindig were not good. Last week, he appeared for a moment to be conceding to internal Democratic Party pressure by disinviting most of the guests limiting the celebration to family and close friends, but that soon turned out to be some kind of head fake. While Obama's party might not have caused a deadly outbreak, it was outdoors and the Obamas were requiring guests to be vaccinated, the former president's birthday bash showed, at a minimum, a cavalier insensitivity to the fears and needs of his neighbors, as well as a general indifference to the political fortunes of his fellow Democrats and the sufferings of Americans. But the kerfuffle shouldn't surprise close observers of Obama's ex-presidency, which has been strikingly bereft of public speech spiritedness. Ex-presidents would be nothing without the trust the public once placed in them by electing them to the presidency in the first place. After the presidency, all their earning power and cultural influence stems from the fact that people once voted for them. Obama has not only largely opted out of using his high profile to serve the public interest, but he's also chosen insultingly to flout it. It's long past time to end the cult of hero worship around this narcissistic plutocrat. And I've just got to take a moment 
to give a little bit of a slow clap because that was beautifully put, Liza. Beautifully put. Or is it Lisa? No, it's Liza. That was a phenomenal article, and I'll link you to it down below if you're watching this on YouTube so you can read the whole thing because we just read a little bit of it. But I think the points that she's making, it's great. Like, this... First and foremost, it is tone deaf. But second of all, like you're really, really forcing a lot of young people out of politics if this is what they have to expect. I mean, so many millennials put their hopes and dreams into Obama, and now he's just like ambivalent, throwing these giant shindigs in the middle of a pandemic at his mansion. And it's gross. Like it goes to show you that politicians, they never cared about you, they care about, you know, themselves. And, you know, what's worse is that, you know, Obama isn't just displaying his callousness here, but he's actively disempowering the people who got him in power. The millennials that voted him into power, he fucked them over in 2020 by getting all of the moderate Democrats to drop out and endorse Joe Biden. I don't know that Bernie Sanders would have won if that didn't happen, right? But would we have had a better chance if Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg remained in the race to take votes away from Joe Biden? Yeah, absolutely. So the fact that Obama doesn't really get involved in politics unless it's to preserve his legacy, it's just, it's so disgusting. And the hatred that I have for Obama continues to grow as he does things like this, as he throws these giant birthday parties. Who gives a fuck if you're turning 60? Nobody cares. My, I mean, I had my birthday this year a couple of weeks ago. You want to know what I did? Jack fucking shit. Who cares? Once you're past 21, your birthday doesn't matter. Sorry to break it to you. 50 Cent said it first. You know, we don't give a fuck if it's your birthday. We don't. Nobody cares. Uh, but I mean, there's this level of hero worship surrounding Obama that is just truly, truly bad because Obama should be held accountable right now that he's no longer in office. I mean, he should have been held accountable while he was in office, but this individual committed war crimes. If you don't want to believe that, talk to the people in Pakistan, in Yemen, or Somalia who are still suffering from the PTSD that his dro drones gave them. Talk to any of those folks. But honestly, like this, this whole shindig that he threw for his birthday, it rubbed me the wrong way. And when I see podcast hosts like Joe Rogan, who always misinform his viewers about COVID-19 and explains why the lockdowns are bad. When he cites examples like this, oh, well, see, Obama doesn't seem to care about COVID-19, so it must just be about liberal elites trying to get control. Like, it's hard to argue against that because, yes, of course, these people who are leaders should be leading by example, including Barack Obama, who's out of office. So, you know, he, he uh, is hurting Democrats who are actually trying to do good, he is making millennials that much more jaded and, you know, uh, by disempowering them and making them want to tune out of electoral politics altogether, which emboldens the Republicans. I think that, like, the world would be better off if Obama just, like, hid away in his mansion and didn't come out of his mansion. Like, if he truly cared about future generations and millennials, he would just stay in his mansion and shut the fuck up. But we know that, you know, he's, he's not going to do that because he loves the spotlight. He loves the attention. So... Yeah, uh, Barack Obama is a piece of shit, but most of my viewers know that already. I think it's just a matter of convincing the normie Democrats now that Barack Obama isn't the savior that they once thought he was, but this is going to be a work in progress because they still idolize Barack Obama. Hell, they still idolize Hillary Clinton to a, to a, you know, a degree, albeit to a lesser extent, but the Democratic Party's got to find some new heroes, and this motherfucker isn't one of them.